What's up fellow earthlings and welcome back to the channel Austin Hustler Hires where everyone is welcome even the haters. Speaking of haters, I want to give a quick shout out to Technogadgets.net. They gave me a new pair of hater blockers today. Let's check them out. Oh yeah. If you want to get your own pair of hater blockers like these, go to Technogadgets.net. I'll put the link down below. You get a discount with my affiliate link. Let's get on with the video. Thank you Technogadgets for the new glasses. today's video we're going to talk about how to price those big junk removals house cleanouts now there are a couple different types of big junk removals and they can be kind of intimidating at times and this video is going to be for those guys that are they're newcomers you know guys and gals uh, that are newcomers to the junk removal industry and just trying to figure out their pricing when you get to these big jobs and the customer is waiting on you to give that estimate or that quote on this whole house clean out or maybe it's a demo job either way I'm gonna help you out today on how to kind of feel more comfortable with the pricing that you're giving so without further ado let's get into the video this first part may be kind of obvious to a lot of you but like I said this video is made particularly for a lot of newcomers to the junk removal industry and we are having new people start up junk removal businesses every single day so this video is for you and this is something that's obvious to people that are veterans but maybe not to you the first thing you gotta do is obviously answer your phone answer your phone hello thank you for calling blah 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 my name is blah 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 how may I help you and that's pretty much how I answer my phone with my company's name and my personal name now when we pick up the phone, we sell that job or we sell the estimate rather to go out and give somebody a free estimate. That's what most junk removal companies offer. All right, so that gets us in the door. You want to avoid giving prices over the phone to the customer because that can be very dangerous for you in the long run and it's really never it's never an accurate estimate unless it's a single item pickup but we're not talking about those today we're talking about whole house cleanouts so you want to go ahead and set that free estimate up for your customer let them know we offer free estimates we send out two texts and they can give you an estimate right there on site and if they agree on a price then we can go ahead and get started right then and there so that's how we go ahead and sell that free estimate guys and we let them know hey if you don't want to go with us there's no obligations there's no uh, fee for this estimate it's free what can it hurt all right so that gets us in the door we get them set up for the next day or the day after whenever you get them set up for all right so that day that you are going to give the free estimate you want to have your truck prepared to do a big job whether it's bringing a couple of trash cans, a wheelbarrow, um, some a, a bunch of those three mil trash bags, big black trash bags. You want to make sure you're bringing a dolly, uh, measuring tape, and uh, you know basically that's that's everything you need to do a whole house clean out. And when you get these things loaded up in your truck, you head out, go to the house. You either meet up with the customer or uh, on, in a lot of cases the customer will just give you the code or a key put a key under the mat or something for you to go ahead and give the estimate while they're doing whatever they need to do in their busy lives right because we are a junk removal service and we are here to help make their lives easier and so whenever they need you to do an estimate without them being there that's just even better because you don't have someone looking over your shoulder or following you around and you got to make sure one thing to make sure of is that they have everything out of the house that they want to keep. You don't want to go into a house that is not sorted through yet. And what I mean by that is, if you go into a house that's not sorted through, they'll be pointing things out here and there, oh I want to keep that, you can get rid of that, I want to keep that, we can get rid of that. That's not the ideal estimate. Now you can make that work and the way that I make it work is, hey, just tell me what is staying, what is not going. And, and this is where you would bring a piece of tape or maybe some sticky notes or those little colored dots, uh, little sticker colored dots. And basically whatever they say is staying, you're gonna mark yourself. 
you're going to ensure that that piece gets marked because you can't rely on the customer to do any of that. You have to make sure your job gets done right and this is this is where it comes in you are a better service a better company because of this because you're coming um prepared to do this job right so anyway that's how you're going to do it if they need to be selective with what items are going and not going um in this case i'm just going to talk about they got the house cleared out and everything in the house is now going to you all right you walk in and you're gonna basically start by looking at how much bulk furniture is there and that's how I do it first all right so and with just bulk furniture how many loads do I think this is you know one two three loads with just the bulk furniture and then after that you're gonna walk through and look through every single cabinet every single closet you're gonna look in the attic and even the basement if there are basements where where you're living now I'm in Florida we don't have many basements here but there are the occasional you know homes that are built above ground and they do have basements so make sure you check every single thing out even the shed in the backyard a lot of house cleanouts include the shed the refrigerator that's a big one guys never forget to check the refrigerator or the freezer I've had a problem with this before where I didn't check the refrigerator when I first started my company. I did the whole house clean out and two weeks later the customer calls me complaining and very upset at us for not checking the refrigerator. She had turned the power off the day after we did the clean out. Two weeks later she goes to check everything and the refrigerator was stinking rotten nasty. All right, So it's very important to check the refrigerator and get that cleaned out if, um, if there is a refrigerator there always check it. So you're going to check all of the uh, spaces under the cabinets, under the sinks. Uh, make sure you check the dishwasher even. A lot of times there's stuff sitting in the dishwasher. So these are things that on a regular basis you can just literally slip, slip your mind because you're so focused on what you can see uh, outside of the cabinets. But this is a huge, huge part. The small items are going to take you even longer and that's going to be the hardest part of the clean out are the small items. Guaranteed. Okay, so if you have a house that is the typical house clean out has large items and small items, you're going to start out with the large items. Get a picture of that in your head. After you go through all the cabinets and everything, you're going to get a picture of that in your head of how many containers this is going to take, right? Now, when you're doing these clean outs, you don't necessarily want to price per load, okay? This is a, this is my, this is my way of doing things and I figured this out because Say you go in a house and you do this estimate and you call the customer and you're like, hey, this is going to be like, you know, four or five loads and we're charging $500 per load. Now, say you get in there and your estimate is way off, all right? Say it was only three loads, and it, but, it, but the amount of work was five loads worth, okay? And, and you'll understand this the more you get into junk removal, guys. There is literally... Um, there are so many things you can uh, misconstrue and, and, and basically get wrong in your head as far as doing the estimate. So say you quoted them at five loads for, uh, that would be $2,500 at $500 a piece. Now when you get it done, there was only three loads and the customer was there watching you load the whole time, right? Now they expect that price of $2,500 to only be $1,500 and you would have screwed yourself out of $1,000 because of the fact that it only took three loads. But what if those three loads were majority small items? That means you're bagging up, putting in trash cans, touching nasty, gross stuff all over the ground. There, there are a lot of other aspects to pricing a junk removal other than how much is fitting in your container, all right? You're hiring several guys to do these big jobs, more guys than you would send out on a regular basis. At least I am anyways. Not to mention um, the the amount of uh, work, the labor that is into goes into picking up all of the small stuff. When you're doing this, it's just so much harder than loading up the big items. When I price out my jobs, I'm going to tell the customer when we price. So basically, when I when I price these out, I tell the customers on jobs like this, whole house cleanouts, we give a price per job. Now, I don't even mention how many loads I believe it's going to be. 
I give them a flat rate price. If I believe it's going to be six loads in my head, I give them $3,000 to $3,500, a ballpark price. Okay, because junk removal does not have a perfectly calculated pricing method. There's just no way you can get a perfectly calculated pricing method. And if you do, they're going to end up price, uh, paying way more, okay? There are companies out there that are like, you know, this much for mattress, this much for a dresser, this much for a couch, this much for miscellaneous pile, this much for bags, this much, you know, and they price out each individual item and that way the customer ends up paying so much more. Um, so I found it way easier and better um, to basically price per job. Now when you get the price per load as far as how much you think it's going to be, you're going to give them that ballpark price because that is going to basically guarantee that you can say, say it ends up being less than you thought. You can give them that lower price. Now if it ends up being more than they thought, you can more than you thought you can give them that higher price all right and and from the beginning you want to be transparent with the customer telling them that this is not a calculated business and we can give you a ballpark estimate but this is what we can do between this number and that number and don't make it like you know a thousand dollars apart try to keep within five hundred dollar ballpark because when when it's a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars apart um, it really gets to be something that the customer is like, oh, well, shoot, it could be like 3000 or 4000 You know, a big, a, $1,000 is a big number. $500 is, is a number that I figured out is a good median uh, to give a ballpark estimate. And then you can kind of stay within that. One of the main things to make sure you're pricing jobs properly is to take your time. Take your time on the estimate, guys. Don't rush through. And this is important because you want to make sure you see everything and you calculate everything in your head. So maybe it's a better idea to do the estimate when you have time. Don't go out and do an estimate before all of your jobs for the day. Go out and do it after all of your jobs for the day because then you know this is the last thing of the day. You can take your time on it and, and you're going home for the day. Um, if you do it before your jobs, you're going to be like, I gotta, I gotta hurry up, I gotta hurry up because my next job is at this time. And you don't want to make that. You don't want to have that in your head. It will um, basically it'll mess up your estimate. And take this from me. Uh, I, I've had experience in this area for about five years now, and I definitely have screwed up some estimates because I was rushing through them. I didn't see certain things. I didn't open up certain cabinets. There was a time where I didn't even go into the garage, and the whole garage was freaking full of stuff. So that was a really upsetting time and I had to keep within the ballpark price that I gave the customer. And we ended up profiting, but not as much as we would have if I would have priced out the garage you know, with the house. So there are big mistakes uh, to be made there if you're rushing through. Make sure you're taking your time on your estimates. That is a really big thing. You wanna make sure that you also, along with those uh, bags and trash cans and wheelbarrow, you wanna bring a tape measure and just measure certain things that might have to go out the back sliding door or you might have to kind of take it apart to get it out the front door. There are several different um, big items in a house that you might be iffy about if you're just starting out with this business. So definitely bring a tape measure that's going to help you out big time in doing your estimates. Also, when you are doing the estimate, you want to calculate into the estimate how far you have to walk. Because maybe when you get the house clean out, uh, you, you're just loading up into the driveway, right? That's not too bad. But say that the backyard and the shed is also part of the estimate and the shed is 200 feet from the front yard you have to walk all the way around the house with this junk and and that gets to be a lot you know that gets to be very time consuming and that gets to be a lot of labor on your guys and yourself so make sure you consider how far you're walking and how much um, labor you're actually doing in these junk removals because that is a huge part of the price it can't just be per load guys it can't just be per load if you want to be accurate and you want to actually be successful in these junk removals make sure that you don't tell the customer it's this much per load it just for me anyway you, you guys do what you want and and this is just advice but 
when I go out, I don't give them that per load because you can totally screw yourself. I'm telling you, I've done it several times where we give a price, okay, we believe this is going to be five loads, $2,500. It only ends up being three loads. And, and now we have to, now the customer's like, why are you charging me $2,500? You said it was $500 per load and you only took out three loads and blah, 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 blah. But the original estimate was five loads at $2,500. And the only reason they're holding you to that is because you said five loads. If you would have just said, this is going to be a $2,500 clean out, it doesn't matter how many loads you take out. You, you get to charge that price either way. And trust me, as long as you're within a reasonable price range, it's going to be worth it to the customer and they're going to pay it. I do this all the time. And it's it, and we're not screwing the customer. We're giving the same price as 1-800-GOT-JUNK or uh, College Hunks Hauling Junk or any of these other big companies. We're probably actually less than them. I've actually done estimates where I've had those big guys go in before me and I price out this way and I still beat their estimate by a couple of hundred dollars and 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 I don't have to worry about the customer in the end saying, oh my gosh, you only loaded up this amount of uh, loads, why is it this much, right? It's per job, it's per job. When you go out and you have a one, one full load on a job, you can say, okay, this is gonna fill the container, it'll be one full load for 500 bucks you can kind of calculate that when it's when it's one load now when it's multiple loads like the big jobs we're talking about it's a lot harder it really is and i know you guys know that so just keep that in mind you're just just starting out your junk removal business price per job instead of per load with all of the big jobs you can price per load if it's a quarter load or a half load or a three quarter load but when it is multiple loads just uh you know price per job if this is something new to you, maybe maybe you don't like the way that I do my pricing, give it a try. See how you like it. See how it works out for you. Make sure you're giving them that ballpark instead of saying, okay, it's going to be exactly $2,500 to do this job. Maybe say it's going to be between $2,000 and $2,500 to get this done and we will be completely transparent with you when we get to the $2,000 mark. If we're not done by then, we'll let you know. Do you want us to keep going? It's going to be another $500 from here. It's going to be that higher uh, ballpark estimate. So you want to keep in touch with your customers. Be completely transparent. Make sure they feel like you're not screwing them. And which you're not. You know, you're doing very hard work. You're going in these houses and cleaning up their crap that they don't want to move, that they don't want to touch. Guys, you, you have to realize this, that, you know, this is something that they don't want to do. They're calling you for a reason. They want to pay you money to do a good job. So do that. Get in there and when you're done with the house, make sure you leave it broom clean. Make sure you sweep up. Wipe the counters off if you have to. Make sure that in the end, the place looks fantastic as best it can. Because I know some of these jobs you go in and, and the carpets are gross and unless you're removing the carpets too as part of the estimate. I do have a video I made on how to remove carpets and how to price carpets. I'll put the link somewhere up in here for you guys if you're interested in watching that video. It's a really good video and it is, it's a good uh, video to describe to you how, um, how nasty these carpets can look and then how clean the house can look after you get the carpets out. Not, uh, let, let alone, you know, we get, when you take the carpets out, you get fleas out of the house. You get the smell out of the house. Um, and it just makes the place look a lot better. So anyways, there's that video there. You could check it out if you want. So um, that's another thing, guys. If you are doing house cleanouts, make sure you're very specific with the customer. Hey, um, it, it, are these carpets coming out? Do you need the, you know, these closet doors to be, are we taking the pictures off the walls? Are we taking, you know, some places even want us to take the refrigerator out, take the dishwasher out, take the laundry machines out. Be very specific with them about all of the appliances in the home. I went and recently did a home that they wanted everything out, including the microwave, the dishwasher, the refrigerator. So um, we weren't very clear in the very beginning with that as far as, um, and when I say we, I sent my guys out and they didn't talk to the customer about the appliances. In the end, we had to remove the appliances anyways, but the customer was really cool. We, we told them, hey, we're going to have to raise the price because these were unexpected items. And if that happens, guys, always talk to the customer about it first. 
it, it, most likely they're going to be fine with paying that extra because you didn't know that was included in the price. If they bitch about it, if they're complaining about it, go ahead and keep to your original estimate and make the customer happy because most likely they're going to they're going to spread your name. They're going to it's going to be word of mouth. So um, that's it guys. I think that pretty much covers uh, a lot of how to go into these big homes and price out these uh, home cleanouts. And I hope it helped you out. If it did, make sure to give me a like and a subscribe down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and hit that notifications bell right next to the subscription bar. I really do appreciate you guys watching all the way through to the end. Make sure to drop a comment if you have any questions, guys, or any tips or anything that I missed in this video because I know I'm not perfect. I kind of just um, want to make these videos very raw and very transparent and very clear to you. So if there's anything I missed, you know, go ahead and put it in the comments down below. Maybe I'll add that in to the next video. Once again, I appreciate you. I'll catch you next time on Austin Hustler Hires with Epic Hustle Ethics. Shoo!